welcome to my workshop you are watching casual diy channel in today's video we're going to be checking out a doweling jig from drill pro it's still in the box and just a quick disclaimer i actually bought this for my own hard earned money so there's uh, no strings attached to this so far i've been using this super cheap um, jig from woolcraft i've actually made the bed with it and um, the whole joinery was based on dowel joinery and it did a reasonable job however i'm thinking of building cabinets and a bit more uh, let's say advanced furniture so i think i needed something a little bit more accurate a little bit more stable and i'm hoping the drill pro jig will be it now i actually went for the poor man's version of this jig the bit more expensive one comes in a nice plastic uh, case however you know i don't really need that so it came in this um cardboard box and as you can see we've got all the items in there nothing has been damaged so let me just take everything out and we'll see what we actually get okay and that's all what you get in the package itself you've got the jig just over here with onboard clamping okay you've got the collets the guide bushing uh, depending on what size of dowels you're going to be using so you've got six ten and eight already installed in the machine um, you've got three drill bits already again six eight and ten millimeter you've got a four snip bit for the cam lock screw or furniture screw depending on how you want to call it and you do have the ability on the jig itself to actually make that connection we'll test that out as well um, you've got some allen keys you've got some uh, stops for all the drill bits so you can drill to the correct depth you want and on top of that you've got this little jig here with the pins each pin obviously six eight and ten millimeter so depending on what uh, dowel joinery what size you're doing you are covered here let's have a look at the jig itself as i said it does have onboard clamping um, facility and that's what i was really looking forward to to have nice and stable and accurate holes for the dowel joinery now it is actually quite heavy I wasn't expecting this to be so so heavy so over here you've got the block um, with the guide bushes and um, for the drill bit so you can drill um, holes for your dowel joinery as you can see you've got one two three four five of them so whatever setup you've got you are covered there also you can actually change each individual um, guide to a certain size okay so you don't have to use the whole block and you can just use certain ones at certain sizes so that's very very good over here as you can see we've got two gold um, knobs just over here as you undo it you are able to um, move the fence and depending on what size of board you want to make the hole in you will adjust that okay so you've got the scales here so for example if you've got an 18 millimeter thick board you will adjust that um, to 10 millimeters okay and i'm gonna just show you exactly why is that uh, 10 millimeters here and on the fence itself you've got this magnetic sheet of metal that's actually one millimeter in thickness okay so <laughs> how this works you can move the fence uh, in increments of two millimeters okay and the reason for that let me just show you i'm gonna undo this the reason for that is you've got these ridges on both of these parts okay so that makes sure that uh, the fence will not shift left to right and you've got a super accurate reading as every single setting will be two millimeters away from each other so hence you've got the one millimeter plate to make sure you are bob on and 100 percent accurate on your work all right then let's drill some holes The board I've got is 18 millimeters in thickness. And as I mentioned, this jig is not self-centering. So we need to undo both of those gold um, knobs at the top here and change the position of the jig to 10 millimeters. It's quite easy to do as you do have the arrow pointing at where you are exactly. So that's done already. Now I can marry up the side of the jig with the side of the board itself making sure everything's nice and flush and what i really like about it is the clamps that make everything so so much easier 
and quicker to do. Not going anywhere, not budging at all. So let's pre drill some holes. I'm going to be using six millimeter dowels, hence the guides here, the bushes are six millimeters, six millimeter drill bit. And I'm just going to install the uh, drill stop on the drill bit to make sure I don't drill too far. As you can see, we've got five bushings in one block, so you can place your dowels however you want and you can plan them accordingly to whatever needs you've got. I really do like that. And there you go, as you see, nothing has moved, nothing has shifted, it is really nice and stable. Perfect two holes. No issues at all. Now we can use this guide uh, that we've got with the machine itself. You can install that from the side. On the top here, you've got the locking bolts for it. So you can undo them, put the rods through, secure them in place. And now you do have the ability to set this up at a certain distance and basically copy the placement of the holes themselves. To use this, you can actually use um, the dowel itself or the pins that come with this setup, okay? Obviously the correct size, in my case, eight millimeters. There you go, that's in the hole now. I'm in the correct place. And now I can pre-drill the holes at that certain uh, distance. That's definitely very, very useful. Now, how about if you want to create an L-shaped corner, just like this one, okay? No problems at all. Just gonna take um, this panel out, put this one in, and there's one thing that we need to do with our jig, okay? The clamping plate needs to be moved from this position to this position, okay? So, with an Allen key, let's undo the bolts, and now we can position it just here. Now remember, I have not moved the front position of the fence, uh, so there's no more adjustments that are needed to be done, making sure the size is flush on one side, and we can pre-drill the hole. Now remember, if you're drilling in this way, make sure to adjust the stop color on your drill bit. And now again, we can use this little device to make sure we are the correct distances for the rest of the holes. Right, let's check out the fit. There you go, absolutely perfect. Flush on the side, on the other side, and flush at the back. Absolutely perfect. Now sometimes if we're building a cabinet or anything like that, or a box, sometimes you want that one side to be inside by one millimeter, so you're gonna have that one millimeter lip over here. And again, just a reminder, you can use this plate to your advantage to make that happen very, very easily and accurately. Now, what if, for example, you want to create a shelf in a box or basically create a L-shaped joint? No problems at all. Let's just mark a line where you want the shelf to be. For example, just over here, okay? I'm gonna whack one dowel inside of the board that will create the L shape that we already pre-drilled the holes for it. And now we need to sort out the holes in here. And to use the jig for this purpose, we need to amend it slightly, okay? So what we don't need, we don't need the fence system over here. So the, those um, gold screws, I'm gonna take them out. 
and we're just going to need this piece, the flat bottom piece. In here, you've got these notches, okay? They represent the sizes of dowels, so 6, 8 and 10 millimeters. On top of it, on the sides of the jig, just over here, you've got a notch here and the same one on the other side. Those indicators on the jig need to be lined up with the mark we've got on our board. Plus, the uh, position of the jig itself will be dictated by the dowel in the first board. Now you need to marry up the jig with the line and with this board and the dowel itself, okay? So let's position everything. Okay, that seems to be perfect for me, so I'm gonna clamp everything down so nothing moves on me. I've got firm grip on the jig itself, pushing against the top piece, making sure uh, the notches are on the lines and I can pre-drill the hole. Now, at this stage, you can again use this stop lock we've got over here or just carry on with the dowel position. Right then, and let's check out if it all fits together. Check that out, absolutely perfect. Nice and flush. Either of the sides, brilliant job. Now it's time to install a cam lock screw or a furniture screw, okay? So we've got these two pieces that we need to marry up on um, two boards, okay? For that, again, as I mentioned, we've got a special force snip bit. And on one of the fences over here, we've got the guy for the force snip bit, just over here. And you can change the position of this guy depending on what size of uh, the screw you've got. And you've got the indicators here and the scale here to uh, get the correct reading and get the correct position of this guide. To amend this and unlock it, you do get this special key as well. Now I'm gonna install the force snip bit in my uh, drill. Make sure you've got the collar as you don't want to go through your board and we're gonna use that guide to drill a hole. And now from the top, I'm gonna pre-drill a hole, six millimeter hole, um, for this bolt to go through. So I've got my six millimeter drill bit. However, the collar here at the minute is eight millimeters, but I want to just change the middle one. So as you remember, we can actually take out the individual guides from our jig and just quickly and easily replace them. That's my six millimeter guide installed and I can pre-drill the hole. Right then, so from this board where we've got that hole on the other side, that's, I'm using a six millimeter dowel to transfer uh, the hole in the other part, in the other board, into which we're actually gonna screw in this screw. I have amended the setup of my jig to this position. So I'm gonna be using these to make sure I'm in the right place. I'm actually gonna use the fence on the edge of the board uh, to make sure in the right position over here as well. And now I can pre-drill the hole. So let's screw that in. And let's put everything together. So I have installed the dowels on top. That's our hole. And when you need to install this locking mechanism here, just like that. And now you can just secure that. And there you go, job done. Now there's one more thing that I want to quickly show you is how to change uh, the block for different guides. Again, here's an Allen key provided. Take the block out. Put another one in and there's only one way they're gonna fit so that's very good you're not gonna make any mistakes with that and it's really that simple to change them out 
So it's time for some final thoughts about the product. I think overall it's actually quite well made and you know the quality of the finish everything fits together absolutely perfectly I've got no issues with that the collets and the guides everything works absolutely perfectly and I do like the additional features where you can repeat um, the holes that you're making and you know the setup you're going to be using it's actually down to you it's very versatile and you don't have to use it the way i showed you you know having the ability to take off the fences the clamps and everything else makes it a really compact and versatile tool however <laughs> saying that you've got four allen keys to operate this jig okay four different sizes and you're going to need different size uh, to change the collets to change the block you're going to have different size to uh, set the distance of this little block you're going to need different allen key uh, to actually place this in the jig and set it to uh, the correct depth so that is a bit of a faffle with it and it does take a bit of time and as i said four different keys that's a little bit annoying to be fair However, if you're doing a larger project, you're not probably going to be constantly changing it. You're just going to do one batch the one way. And then when you're going to go for the L shape or whatever, you're going to change it to the other setup of this jig. So in a bigger project, I don't think it's going to be as annoying as <laughs> in my initial tests. Now, comparing it to this little jig, um, one major thing that I'm actually missing in this is the ability to clamp it properly, okay? It's quite awkward to actually clamp it down and sometimes holding it by your hand may not give you the best results. And this is not an issue with this jig. And accuracy with double joinery is the key if you're not going to get it accurate it's not going to work for you so from that perspective definitely this is a massive upgrade on top of it with this jig you can only drill one hole at a time with this you've got up to five guys straight away and you can pre-drill up to five holes if you wanted next to each other and that is a massive time saver however the price difference <laughs> it all depends Bends, right so this is quite quite expensive actually compared to the chip holder however if you are thinking of making a lot of cabinets and dowel joinery and you can't afford a domino which i can't i think this is a very good solution dowel joinery is very very strong and it's very very good people stop using this method because a <laughs> domino came out and it's quick and accurate and the reason you have to be accurate when doing this, okay? But with this jig, accuracy will not be a problem. Quickness, you're not gonna beat a domino with that, unfortunately. For me personally, I think it's a very, very good choice and I'm quite happy that I bought it. Um, if you're interested in that, I'm gonna leave a link down below in the description of this video so you can check it out on Banggood. Or if you're not sure and you're thinking about it, just give it a few months and I'll have some more projects that I'm going to be using this to see if I'm going to find any faults, any major issues with it. At the moment, I think this is a very good jig, even despite those little uh, tiny issues it has. I think this is the way forward for me and that's what I'm going to be using in the near future. Now, if you are interested in woodworking, DIY projects, anything like that, I've actually got you covered on my channel. I've got a full playlist just for you with plenty of cool content so here are the playlists hopefully you will find something there that will tickle your fancy and uh, i'll see you on one of those videos there take care